What is up, Internet? Welcome back to Mile High K, America's only K car channel. Enough! So, in today's video, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a compare and contrast between the Honda Beat transmission and the Honda Acti transmission. The two transmissions on the outside look very similar. They both have the same rear engine mount bolt pattern. So there's three bolts that hold the rear motor mount on. But funny enough, the Beat transmission only uses these two while the Acti employs all three. Another big difference is that the Beat transmission has a slave cylinder for a hydraulic clutch. The one out of the Acti has this cable clutch release, something that I want to swap over from the Acti transmission to the Beat transmission is this cable clutch release. That is very easy to do. While editing this video, I realize that I'm making this sound extremely easy. And after filming the video, not everything went exactly according to plan. Later in the video, you'll see more in depth of what I'm talking about, but I wanna show you a side-by-side -side and these mounting points for the clutch release on both transmissions are not the same and you'll see why a little bit later on. But back to the video. On the inside here, there is one 12 millimeter bolt right here that holds the rod where the throw out bearing is. So as soon as you remove this, this entire rod slides out and it can be transferred over to the beat. You can see it is the same setup on the inside as on the active transmission. While these two are flipped up, I want to point out one of the more notable reasons of why I'm going to be using the beat transmission case over the Acti, and it's because of this extra hole. On the Acti, there is no bolt hole right here. There are six mounting points of where it connects to the engine block. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. And on here, there are eight because of this extra one down here. So I don't know why Honda decided to do this. Any extra strength or rigidity I'm going to take. So I'm going to be using this case. Another thing that I'm going to be swapping over from the Acti transmission to the beat is the cable driven speedometer. So there's one 10 millimeter bolt right here that holds this whole assembly in. And on the beat, since it's EFI and there is a computer, the speedometer is controlled electronically, but it has this same 10 millimeter bolt right here holding this whole assembly in. So if you remove this, you can pop it out and swap over the cable driven one. The reason I'm going to be swapping these components over is basically just to simplify the swap process. So since that these are existing systems in the van, there is no point in making a bigger job for myself by trying to use the electronic or the hydro driven components when it, there's already something that has worked and will continue to work in the future. If I want to eventually change the speedometer from the cable over to the electronic one, I will at least have the parts laying around to do so. And I don't want to do that right now because it's already going to be a pain to get the swap done in a timely manner. Remember earlier in the video when I said things did not go according to plan? Well, this is where it started to go wrong. First, the original plan was to take fourth and fifth gear out of the Acti transmission and swap them into the Beat transmission, so I started to take the transmission apart to do so. I was trying to get the case off of the transmission, and I did not realize that you needed to take out a snap ring that is under this little cover right here. And after I got the case off and inspected the gears, I realized I was in over my head, and I started to put it back together. This is where things went wrong and I actually ended up breaking the case of the Acti transmission which I will explain in detail right now. 
Okay, there's been a change of plans. So in the last clip you saw me kind of put back together the transmission that I just took apart. And it's because about the time where I got the transmission case off, I figured out that I was a little in over my head and I didn't want to start taking apart the other transmission in order to put the new gears into it and then possibly have two unusable transmissions. And I was proven right by the fact that I broke the Acti transmission. How I did that was when I was putting the case back on, I was being impatient and I forced the case back down onto here so I got the snap ring to go back on and then it still wasn't seating correctly so I just started to zip down the bolts and I probably shouldn't have done that because if you look on the underside, I busted a hole through here. So this is where the counter shaft of the transmission is and there's a little piece of metal of the case right here. While I was fiddling with the transmission trying to take it apart, I think these two little cylinders, I'm guessing they're part of a bearing for the counter shaft, they must have got dislodged and when I forced the case closed, it just popped out this whole circle right here. This part of the case is now kind of useless so I'm just gonna bag up the loose parts. It was a learning experience to take it all apart but now I'm going to just swap over the exterior parts of the transmission from the Acti and put it on to the beat transmission. That's kind of a bummer that I broke it but you live and you learn. Good thing I have a spare and I will not be cracking that one open so I do not break that one. That's where I'm at. Uh, I'm gonna call it for the night, it's kind of late, but long story short, don't break shit. All right, we're back in the garage. It's the next day, and this is the transmission out of the beat. I got all the stuff from the active transmission uh, that I wanted to transfer over, taken off, and the old transmission is back there. So now what we're gonna do is we're not gonna worry about fourth and fifth gear out of the Acti at this point in time. We can always change it later, but I'm just going to do all the things where I don't have to open the case because last night was a great example of if it feels like something's wrong, something's wrong. With that public service announcement out of the way, let's transfer over some things from the Acti transmission into the Beat transmission. The first thing that we're gonna start with is the speedometer. It's a electric speedometer and the one out of the Acti is cable driven. The only thing that holds this down are three 10 millimeter bolts and it comes right off. So this is the upper part. This is, it's like a little short cable that connects to the speedometer gear down here and inside of here is a speed sensor. Take this off with two tens. And then the actual housing is another 10 millimeter bolt. And this just pops out like so. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the electric Speedo and the mechanical one. I just counted the number of teeth on the drive gear and both of them have 21. So I'm fairly confident that this should just be a plug and play solution. So right here on the edge, there's a little notch, but the way that this piece is held down is actually very simple. And so this slides in and then this little plate is what bolts right here and this little piece of metal slides into this notch and is what holds it down. And there we go. Now we have a cable driven speedometer. The next part that I want to change that I mentioned earlier is that the beat transmission has a hydraulic clutch throw out. 
and it is the same setup in the Acti, except the Acti has a cable clutch. So to make my life simpler, I want to use the cable driven clutch. How you remove that is up here is the clutch slave cylinder. There's two 12 millimeter bolts that hold it down. And then there's a little rod that goes through right here and it is held on with a 12 millimeter bolt right here that is attached to the throw out bearing. And the little arm just moves back and forth to uh, engage and disengage the clutch. So all I need to do is take these off, swap the new parts in, and then we're all ready to go. I am going to be ordering a new clutch kit, but I am just going to be putting on uh, the old Acti throw out bearing in the meantime. The cable driven arm is very similar to the hydro arm, except up at the top, there's a different mount to hold the cable on. And this is for the hydro, and it just pushes it back here when the cable pulls it a little bit further. All you need to do is put the throw out bearing in here and then stick the clutch rod back down in. Aha, this is a problem. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. So I did not realize that the beat transmission arm is a little longer. So we might have a problem running the cable driven arm. What is up internet? It is again the next day and I just wanted to get y'all up to speed on some of the things that I've been doing to make the beat transmission work inside of the Acti. Got the transmission right here. The main things that I've been doing is making both of the brackets that were meant for the beat and the Acti work in unison. So this top bracket is out of the beat and it is scooted over so that the shifter cable can go over the top of the low part of the clutch release arm. And normally under here is where the clutch slave cylinder goes. And I just spaced it up with these 3 8 inch spacers. So this makes up for the actual slave cylinder not being there and brings it up to the right height. And it actually works in my favor because it also boosted up this arm which is going to be for the cable clutch release right now I have the hydraulic one all cleaned off and this is the clutch release arm off of the Acti and I just cut it off of the old clutch release um, rod that normally goes through there and I marked on the transmission how far the clutch lever actually needs to go in order to properly engage and disengage it. So I have the same marks here on the cable clutch arm and I'm just going to weld it on top of the old one. I'm not gonna cut this arm off just in case I want to use the hydro clutch in the future. But with propping up these mounts to fit into each other, it actually puts the cable clutch at a much better height for uh, the beat transmission because the big issue is that on the Acti transmission, this sits a little lower. So when this arm is on there, it's actually really close to the top right here. That makes the cable clutch rod shorter. That's why I need to cut it off and put it on this one. So that was a mouthful. It's kind of complicated, but it'll all make sense once it's in the car. I also had to notch out the beat shifter cable bracket so it can fit inside this one and then I notched the old Acti shifter cable bracket down just so it is has a nice clean shot over here and it's all gonna fit under itself and there is just enough play to where when the clutch is fully engaged this bracket actually acts as a secondary stop so it can't uh, overextend the throw out bearing so I'm going to weld this on probably not gonna film it just because I'm not very good at welding and I don't want any video evidence of that I just finished up that little bit of fabrication that I needed to do on the clutch release arm rod 
thing. It looks pretty good. I put a fresh coat of paint on the brackets and the clutch release arm just to make sure that it doesn't rust and it looks nice and sleek. You can see here that the clutch has full throw before it touches the new bracket I made. And you can look through there. It's a pretty close straight shot from where it mounts to where the actual arm pulls back. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. And then there is clearance for the shift cable to go right through here. I don't think that we're gonna run into any clearance issues with the clutch release arm. I did clean up the transmission a little bit. I just took a wire wheel, get all of the buildup off of the outside. So that's gonna be it for this video. We finished up transferring all of the stuff from the old Acti transmission over to the new Beat transmission. And in the next video, we're going to be installing the brand new timing belt and continuing to reassemble the engine to prepare for final assembly to put into the van. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like all of this K-Car content and hope to see you in the next one. But for now, remember, keep it small. Oh, 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 oh,